All right, this is Matt Morozik, and this will be work in progress number six on the Matt X Hulk. Uh, no painting today. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the left leg attached and affixed. Um, and he needs to, once I do that, he needs to dry overnight for the epoxy to cure. Their fingernails look freaking awesome. They are going to get a slight sheen to them right now. They're flat coated. I just sealed them last night, but they've been cured. At the very end, I'll go and I'll hand brush some like a satin finish on them so they're not so flat. So to do this, um, the trick, this is the tricky part about this kit, is that you have to um, leave one leg or both legs um, unattached to get the pants on. Um, I've seen some of these where they leave both legs unattached and you have to, if you want to ever move the guy or ship him, you have to take, take, the pant, take both legs off, put the pants on and vice versa. So they're always, um, he's not one piece, he's actually three pieces, but I want this guy solid. And these, as you can see, you know, this joint is pretty loose right now. And that's because when I first pinned this months ago, <clears throat> I made a, a half inch hole in both ends and used a, um, like a five eighths, not a five eighths, um, like a three eighths rod, a fairly large rod. So right now I've got this, oops, heavy like, got this big hole right here. And you can see I've got some smaller holes around the, uh, around the perimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this hole with Abe's epoxy uh, sculpt. I'm going to insert, well, first I have to put the pants on. got to put the pants on first. <laughs> Don't forget to do that because if both legs are attached and you can't get one or both off, you can't get the pants on. I'm going to put the pants on. I'm going to fill this hole with Abe's epoxy most of the way. And then I'm going to slide this up in there with the pants on. And then, then I have to pull the pants out of the way, up out of the way, so I can get these rods from the around the edges in, which is this size right here. And um, once that dries overnight, this leg will be a solid piece. And in the morning what I'll do is um, I'm gonna go through and I'll, I'll fill this seam a little bit. And it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna fill it, sand it down, and then I'll just spray on some, uh, some green paint, even though you're really not gonna see it, to, um, to fix that. So I've got the pants right here, it's purple pants. So first step is you gotta put the pants on. So they're a pretty tight fit, um, even when he's apart. So I need to make sure I've got lots of room here to work. So I'm gonna get the base out of the way for now. And I'll make sure my table's covered in towels and stuff so I can lay him down and stuff and work. I've got my A's over here. I've got my brass rod. Uh, I need some rubber gloves. To work with the A's. I just want to make sure I have basically nothing on my table, nothing that I can bump him into to uh, scuff up or scratch this paint job because I do not want to have to go and try to match the work I've done. It would be a nightmare trying to do that. Uh, one second. Oh, and I also have some uh, tape here so I can hold the pants out of the, out of the way. So, the game plan first is to. I'm going to cut uh, some of these metal rods to uh, an approximate length, so put that in right about there. I'm going to mark that pencil right there, take that out, and then I know I need to cut that shorter than that mark. Let's see, I hope this is, I may have to use a Dremel on this, it's pretty Let's see. Nope, I got it. There's one. And what these rods do is they'll prevent his leg from ever twisting. But even though that big pin in there, you know, he's got this guy's big. And what I'll do is I'll put him on the base overnight while he cures, because his feet fit on the base a very specific way. Right there. So I'm just cutting my brass rods right now. Okay, 
So I've got two cut right now. I'm going to just use those for now. And then when I get the others, those A's in, I'll do the other one. So for now, one reason I'm using the A's is because it's, it's it, you know, it takes like 12 to 24 hours for it to fully cure. So I have tons of working time with it. So let me get my gloves out. This stuff is sticky. Here we go. Part A. Same stuff I used when I did all the seam work on this guy. Part B. And, and I always mix more than I need. I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. So I'm going to mix up this amount right here. And try to make it as close to possible. Same size. If I want to be real accurate, I'd wait, but I just kind of do it visually. Try to get two balls about the same size. Right about there. And this is part B. Which is right there. This is part A. Right there. And then I'm going to mix this up and just do that on time lapse because I got to mix it for a few minutes. Okay, so this has been uh, kneaded together for several minutes and it should be good to go. Now what I want to do is I want to change my gloves. I don't want to touch this after uh, mixing the epoxy. And I'm going to get um, just a skewer so I can push the epoxy in there with. And I may have to mix up a little more. That hole's pretty deep um, when I first did this. So let's see. So I'll be going to do a lot of gloves on this because every time I touch the epoxy, I do not want to touch the statue after afterwards. Okay, so over here, bring him closer to me. There. Okay. So so I don't get. So now I'm going to just basically kind of pack this hole with the A's. And I'll have to do this maybe once or twice. Yeah, that, that hole's pretty deep. <laughs> I have to mix up some more. I don't want to use like a 30 minute epoxy on this particular thing because I don't want it all oozing out on this paint job. That would be a disaster. Actually, that may be good right there. Let's see. But once I'm done with this, it'll be a solid piece and he will never come apart. Okay, so that's pretty good. I want to make sure that when I put the, the leg in, that basically the, the void around the peg gets filled with this putty. So I'm going gonna, gonna to go ahead and get another glove. I'm going to get these gloves like crazy. Fine, they're cheap. We're cheap in the end. And I'm going to see how this goes in there. If it goes in too easily, then I'll mix up some more putty and put more in. If it goes in with a little bit of resistance, and I haven't put the pants on yet. So, but right now, I just want to test this. So it's going to go in. Actually, I may have too much putty in there. Yep, okay. So I got too much putty. It's fine. Take some out. I may have to cut that pin a little bit shorter. We'll see. Got all compacted down. 
at the bottom of that hole. that hard I'll go in All right, so that's gonna work so what I'm gonna do now I know that's gonna work it's a snug fit I'm gonna put the pants on pants on get your pants on yeah, I'm gonna change gloves again What I probably will do is use some epoxy on the pigs that go on the outside and put a thin coat on those before I insert them. Okay, so pants go on. Time to get dressed, Hulk. And they're tight. You guys are freaking tight pants. I think Hulk needs to go up in a size. And it's weird, I've seen um, this kit with different colored pants. This one to have to have purple. I've seen blue, I think I've seen gray. Um, I could be wrong, but I've seen other colored pants. So I'm not sure what determines what color pants he got when he bought this, but okay. So now he looks like he's a, a, war vet, a, a veteran of some war. He could roll the pants up out of the way. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I think you can. Get out of the way. And I got to me a tape, but I may have to get some other tape. Come on. There we go. So these things are a tight fit, like that. Okay. There's two things that are kind of, um, it's nice that the, the, the seam is so high on the thigh because it is really well hidden once the pants are on and everything, because the, the pants come down around his, his calves, so the seam's way up here. So there's no chance unless you physically come in here and try to roll his pants up that you'll see like that seam or the, where the paint is not going to really match very well. But on the other hand, it's really hard because you have to to get it on. It's so high up and you don't have much room to roll the pants up. Okay, so now we're going to put this in. Now I'm push, having to push pretty down hard to get it, get it in there, which is good. Too much in there, so I'm gonna do that all the way. Take some out. So, got a little bit of a gap there. It needs to be closed up. Right about there. So, now I'm going to get the base out. I'm going to have to cover the base up with something because I don't want it again, to again scratch the paint on his feet.
Here's the big honking base. And I'm going to line it with some paper towels. I think this will keep his feet from getting marred. I want to get him standing on the base. He fits in there a very kind of specific way. Right there. And you wouldn't know by looking at the base that his feet kind of fit in there a certain way, but they do. Once you get him on there, he kind of walks. I'm kind of locked into place. Okay, what I really need is a turntable. Uh, here it is. So, give me one second. So, Sonia, you were asking me if I should put a pin in this, um, on the base and him. I don't think you have to. He weighs a ton. Um, I usually transport him like this. I pick him up on the base and move him like that. And um, unless you have to really ha try hard to knock him over, he weighs a ton. So you see, I picked up the whole base with him on it. And unless I really <laughs> just physically dropped him, uh, it's, he's balanced really, really well. Okay. So now, let's check. Out. So he's on the base the way he's supposed to be, and this base is going to change drastically. Um, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> but his feet position of the base should stay relatively the same. Now, as I got that going on, I can start to insert these um, smaller pegs around the perimeter, and that should line him up even more. So Oh, that actually goes into the A's. That's actually really perfect that it does that. Okay. Come on, Hulk, show some leg. Ideally, when I'm done with this, I just have to put a little bead of putty in this to kind of hide that seam a little bit. And I don't think you'll notice it anyway, but I'm going to fill it and just do a spot paint job on it. Okay, so that feels good there. The little A's came out, which is a good sign. That means it's going to lock in there very nicely. That hole lines up really well. I'm just checking my alignment on these holes, making sure he lines up really good. That lines up well. There's A's in there. Okay. So this is where he needs to be. He's right, right about there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these two pins first because they're the longest. I'm going to mark that with a pencil. And this is a case where I do not want to cut these any longer than necessary because I don't want to do any grinding on them like I did previously. And then I'm just cut this a little shorter than my mark. I should fit in there perfectly. Right here. And I am going to put a small bit of epoxy on this guy. Maybe I'll need some Q-tips just in case. Again, I'm not real worried about messing up the paint job in like this, you know, this inch of space because you're not going to see it once it's all together. But, you know, I like to make sure everything looks as good as possible. 
even though you don't see it. It's nice to know that it was done correctly. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit here. Come on. I think most of you take the cap off. Way more than I need, but again, it's okay. Hostile stick, and then I'm going to get my metal file. I'm going to scuff this brass rod up pretty good. She's going to give her epoxy something to grip on too really good. Okay, so now it's got some nice grooves in there. Mix up the epoxy. thin coat on it. There's another rod to push it in all the way. like that. We got a little bit of epoxy sticking out here, so we're gonna, just gonna wipe it up a little bit. And I'll fill that hole with putty later. So there's one pin in place. I'm gonna do this one next. Where's my pencil? There it is. Cut this just a hair short. Like that. Let's cut it up. I get this all together. I won't touch this till uh, tomorrow. I won't work on the seam or anything. getting there. So between that big rod with that A's around it and these four pins, uh, this sh should never come apart. That's the plan. Mark 
pencil doodle. And this. Got these handheld bolt cutters, which is perfect for cutting the size brass rod that I use. This is about as big as I can cut handheld without getting the big old big old bolt cutters out. So anyone who watches this, uh, if you're not familiar with this statue, uh, my client has been offered $5,000 for him, and he turned that down. <laughs> That's how much this guy is worth. It kind of boggles my mind. Uh, first of all, that he goes for that much, and then I get to paint him as my first Hulk. It's pretty cool. So I feel pretty honored that I'm getting to do it. This epoxy is just about to kick off, so we're going to put him in pretty quick. Epoxy just kicked off right before I put that in there as I was putting it in, so that was like perfect timing on that. Okay, okay, so I got some epoxy in my gloves, so I'm gonna again switch those out. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna put So this will be a short video and I compared to everything else I've been doing. This won't be an hour long, this will be 30 minutes or so. Let's see. Okay. Same thing. Just So. And I'm going to cut this a little bit at an angle. I kind of match the angle of the leg by doing the other ones. There you go. I need to mix up a new little batch of epoxy. This one's trash. Uh, there's more cups out here. It's not. I got through epoxy cups like crazy. I buy these from my local hobby shop, but they're expensive. And I started getting them on Amazon because I buy, I go through them, so, I go through them so fast just for mixing paint and stuff like this that I buy in bulk now. Instead of buying it 50 at a time, I buy 200 at a time. Okay, I don't need a lot, really, for this one. That's it. That's more than I need again, but it's all right. So this is five minute epoxy, which means your working time is about five minutes. Um, the more you mix up, the less work time you have because it, as it starts to cure, it heats up and then it just exponentially cures faster. So the more you have, the more heat it generates, the faster it cures. I've mixed entire cups of epoxy like up to here and then by the time I'm done mixing it up, it is solidified. <laughs> um, and you can't touch, the, the cup's so hot you can't even pick it up. So, mix up in small batches. Same thing with this. 
I'm just really coating this bottom part of the peg because as it slides into the hole, it kind of coats the inside of the hole and um, spreads it out over the entire peg. There. Oh, got a little bit of epoxy on the outside of here, but it's no big deal. Uh, by the time I'm done fixing that and blending the paint, so basically that's done. Um, I do have another hole here. Is this? Will I take a peg? It will. I got an. So I have five holes all the way around this leg. So once this has cured overnight, I'll come up here and I'll give it a good, make sure it's really secure, really, you know, give it a good twist to make sure everything's secure. And if for whatever reason it's not, I can still drill an additional hole or two around the um, perimeter and, you know, add more pins if I need to. I don't anticipate that happening <laughs> the way I have this all together, but you never know. This is my first rodeo with this guy. All right. So now Hulk's leg has been attached. Now it's just a waiting game. I'm not gonna take them off the base. I want them to sit here on the base like this um, as this dries. But with those pegs in there, his leg doesn't want to twist, even as it is now. So that's a good sign that he's in the right position. And I got a little bit of a gap. You know, it's a little bigger than I'd like, but um, it's not that big of a deal. And I can actually uh, pull the pants down and kind of show you what this will look like before I even fix the seam. And even if I even if I didn't fix the seam, you wouldn't be able to really you wouldn't be able to see it really. There's a little bit of a bump right there, but uh, of course I am I am going to fix it because that's what you need to do, especially for a piece like this. You, you do everything correctly. Well, I do everything. Try to do everything correctly for every piece. But so I'm just going to pull those out of the way for now. And uh, the next part will be um, I think what I'll do is I'll just call this video done because the next video will, would, would be basically just filling this in, sanding it, and then throwing some style wrist primer on it. And you guys saw that in the very first few videos. We're not sanding all the other seams. So it's the same thing just on this leg. So that's it for this video tonight. Just getting the, getting the pants on, getting the leg attached, getting it pinned, and getting it in position. Now the base. <laughs> Sonu who's asked it, has asked for me to turn this rock base into concrete. Um, which really isn't that hard. It's just, it, it's gonna take some time. So he doesn't like the way it looks. He thinks it looks like an Oreo cookie. And I had have to agree. Um, I'm not sure what they were going for here. Like maybe a cracked desert scape. Part of the reason it looks so funky is because all these little pieces are so symmetrically the same size. Um, it, it doesn't look natural. If, you know, if the base, if these pieces that were cracking were different sizes or not so many of them, I think it would make more sense. So basically what I have to do is there's a bunch of little pieces sticking up. Those will have to just come off completely. And what I'll do is I'll basically slather this thing in a coat of Bondo or plaster and I'll, I'll wrap his feet in plastic um, and I'll set him down on the base while that's still wet. And that will give the position of his feet and the imprint of his feet in the base. And then after that, it's a matter of going in and kind of like, he's giving me some references adding some cracks. Like the crack that comes right down the middle here, that's like perfect. That like is a real sense of weight and like something is breaking the surface. These little, this, all these little cracks, I don't get. Um, I do like the texture along the, the side here. Um, so I can do kind of a combination where this is concrete on top of dirt, basically just filling in this top edge a little bit with some Bondo or whatever. Actually the texture that's right here, I'm not sure if you can see that. That's perfect. That looks like the edge of a concrete slab. That's exactly what it should look like. This looks like dirt. So this base is a little confusing to me. Um, but yeah, but man, I tell you what, if you watch this, I am so freaking thrilled with how he looks. I mean, this is really freaking, 
I, the response I've gotten um, has been extremely, extremely good from everyone. Um, so, oh, oh, by the way, he has been sealed. I sealed him really good last night. So, like, now that his pants are on, I can't seal him again. I'd have to. There's all sorts of my dust prints on the pants. I'll get this off later. Like, I can't. The only thing I, I the only thing I'm gonna have to seal again is his face once I do the portrait. But that's easy. I'll just put some plastic or wrapper and, and spray him. But the body's been sealed real good. The hands were sealed again last night. Like I said, oh, I can brush on some uh, uh, luster on this. I can do that real quick. So let me get um. What I'm gonna do? I gotta find it. Give me a second. I'm going to pause. Okay. Sorry. So I'm going to brush on. This is uh, an acrylic. It says glossy, but when it's dry, it's not going to be real glossy. I'm going to do one and let it dry and see what it looks like. We don't want to shoot. We don't want these super shiny. We just want them to have like a slight sheen to them. Right now they're flat, kind of like the rest of the rest of them. And I do have a few small little areas I need to go and touch up with my airbrush. I notice a little, little uh, something right here on top of this finger I want to fix. Uh, it's not, again, this is me, just me being pretty nitpicking at this point. Um, I got a little something on top. Oh, I, I, a little something on top of that finger I got to fix, a little brush touch. So um, just really minor things to fix on the skin. Um, I need to paint the bottom of the feet still. Um, I'll ask Sonu, but I'm going to ask, hey, I would suggest painting them just bottom of them black, personally. You're not going to see them. Um, and I'll never match this whole paint scheme anyway with as many steps and layers as I've done. They'll never look exactly the same. So I'm just going to suggest painting black and uh, that'll be good. So uh, yeah, so I'm just going to brush on a little bit of this real quick. Can you shake that real good? I'm going to try it on this thumb. Let's see what it does. And when you first put this stuff on, it's kind of milky. But this is a true um, acrylic, water-based acrylic. Just try to avoid getting it on the skin. Just like that. So, let's see if that shows up. It's going to be really bright because the light, uh, his fingernails look, they, they look white on camera, but they're not. They're that yellowish. So they can kind of see that little bit of gloss. And I think that's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and get those all brushed. I'll just take a few minutes and that'll really be it for today. So, so I'll go ahead and keep recording while I do this. Just so I get, I'll put on time lapse. So that'll be it for tonight. This um, gloss, if you don't know, uh, usually an acrylic gloss is never really glossy. Um, it's just the nature of the, the type of medium it is. It is dried down perfectly to a kind of a semi-matte, semi-gloss look on the nail. It looks super natural and realistic. Let's see if I can, if you can see it, but you can kind of see a little bit of a sheen to it. It's like perfect. So yeah, really, really and I love it. I get excited when I'm working on something and everything's working the way I want or something new to me and I'm learning a lot of new stuff. I've learned so much on this guy um, doing screen, green skin, completely new to me. Doing fingernails, completely new to me. Um, the next new thing will be doing like the gum, the gum transition that he wants. He wants us to go from this green to, and then fade into kind of like a, a fleshy tone. So I'm going to have to airbrush that and um, I'm going to have to I'm going to mask it off somehow. I'm not sure I'm going to tackle that yet. So, but yeah, so that's it for tonight. Uh, I got the leg on. He's on the base. That's got to cure overnight. Um, and then I can fill in that gap a little bit with some putty and do a spot paint paint fix on that. And it'll be, that should be fairly quick. 
Uh, nothing like this leg was. But uh, yeah, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching as usual. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.